Hi, good evening. You're with me, Jasmine Obaka, and this is Agenda Awani. And today is a special day for all women out there and also for men who are trying to get a baby or wanting to get more babies. So today I have a special guest with me. I'm going to share with you later who it is. Uh, he is from the TMC Fertility Centre in Kota Damansara. But I want to also share with you, when you're hoping to make a baby and wondering about your chances at advanced maternal age. When we talk about advanced maternal age, it's the medical term of women who wants to get pregnant at the age of 35 and later. So age is definitely one of the key factors that predict your ability to uh, conceive. However, other, um, I would say, key factors are also contributing to that. So we'll ask him later on what it is about. And studies show your fertility starts to decline at the age of 30 and keeps on dropping steadily until you hit menopause. However, it's not only possible to deliver a healthy baby after age 35 because it's actually quite common. So today, Dr. Navdeep Singh, mm. uh, consultant, obstetrician and gynecologist, also a fertility specialist, like I said, from TMC Fertility Centre, uh, is here to share with us his insights on questions surrounding fertility especially. So the first question that I want to ask you, Dr. Navdeep, is chances of getting pregnant decreases as women age, as I was mentioning just yes. now. And the risk of having an unhealthy baby increases as well. Correct. So can we tell the viewers out there more or less why that happens and why are the chances of a baby being born unhealthy increases as well? Well, <clears throat> women are born with a certain number of eggs. And the first time they hit their menstrual period, their menarche, they have about two to three thousand eggs. And as they get older and older, they tend to lose their best eggs. Okay, so when they reach age of th uh, 35, 37 years of age, they have about tw 15 to 25,000 eggs left. Okay, and when it crosses up to age of 40 and above, then all their best eggs would have been lost already. So the ones that, that are left are generally the ones which are not very healthy. Mm -hmm. okay? So <clears throat> the risk of having a Down syndrome child, for example, is 1 in 100. That's oh. only about 1%. And for us in the medical fertility, that's high enough. And are those the questions that are usually asked when you... Because the first thing you mentioned was Down syndrome, for example. Are those the common questions that are asked by patients? Yes, definitely. A lot of patients are a bit worried about that. <coughs> because the, they mentioned the risk is about 1%. So they, when, even if they get pregnant naturally, they would insist on certain tests to be done on mm, them mm. to ascertain whether the baby is healthy or not, mm. which is by scans and even to blood tests. Mm -hmm. Okay, so which we can determine quite accurately, okay, whether the baby is affected or not. Yep. However, ninety-nine percent of them would be fine. No. Okay, and um, the the in terms of fertility treatments, we prefer the patients to be of, of younger age group mm. because their successes is much higher yep. because they've got much more um, the, the number of eggs and the quality of eggs being much better. Yep. Okay. However, <coughs> due to uh, this. Uh, Current scenario in our, our lifestyles, career-minded women, you know, um, uh, they tend to they tend to delay their childbirths, okay, to a later age. Mm. Hence, currently we are seeing quite a number of patients which uh, are above age of 35. Mm. But don't despair. <laughs> <laughs> the, treat, the treatments out there, they have, they have quite a uh, good type of uh, treatment uh, treatment uh, protocols which are available, mm. which we can help these women achieve their dream of getting a baby. Mm. So talking about um, you know chances of getting a baby and mm. age increasing and all that, we also want to talk about uh, things like when a couple comes in and they, they they've been married say a couple of years and they've been wanting a, a baby and they tell you like you know let's run some tests then um, like say they come out with um, infertile they say so what are the treatments that are given to these couples because a lot of stigma talks about when we talk about infertility it's only women but now we also want to talk about how men are also decided to be infertile for example so what are the treatments offered well firstly it takes two hands to clap so <laughs> both men and women have to be checked at the same time yeah before before we uh, we discuss the treatment options there are a few things that we do to mm. determine the type of treatments which we can offer the patient. Mm. Because most importantly, all the patients are different. Correct. So we need to individualize the treatment between patient and patient. So there are four main things that we check in a couple when they first come in for a consultation. First is husband's sperm analysis. Mm. Three to five days after abstinence is the best time for us to ascertain whether his sperm quality is adequate or not. There, there are a few, few aspects of the sperm test. One is the concentration and number of sperms that he has. 
Secondly, the motility, the sperm is moving. Mm. Okay. Thirdly, is what we call morphology. Morphology is the normal shape and size of the sperm. Mm -hmm. So all these things are important. Secondly, for women, mm. we would we will do a transvaginal ultrasound scan to determine whether the womb is normal, yep. and then we'll, we'll assess the the ovaries. We look for things like <clears throat> the antral follicle counts. Antral follicle counts is basically a test of ovarian reserve where we can determine whether her whether she has enough eggs or not. Yeah. Okay, and the other things too like fibroids or ovarian cysts or certain abnormalities which need to be surgically corrected before we start the fertility treatment for the patient. Mm -hmm. Thirdly, is the fallopian tubes. Fallopian tubes are the bridge between the sperm and the eggs. Okay, that's where. The, the, the eggs are fertilized and subsequently are pushed into the womb. Mm. So if the fallopian tubes are blocked, there's no way the lady can yeah. conceive so naturally. So that. we have to address that by, by ways of doing a hysterosalpingogram, the x ray, or there's another procedure called a saline gram where we inject a fluid into the fallopian tubes to see whether or not the fluid flows out nicely. And thirdly, you have the laparoscopic surgery mm. where where we, we give them uh, anesthesia and we put in cameras into the tummy to assess the womb and, and the uh, fallopian tubes. Okay? Finally, those patients with, who, have, who are of the older age, who are older age group or have irregular cycles, we have to do their hormonal, assess, uh, hormonal assessments. Okay? Where the hormonal test will, will guide us as to whether the patient has other medical problems we need to be I mean, yeah. uh, sorted out first. Example, thyroid problems, mm. you know, um, diabetes, mm. prolactin issues, yeah? So, by treating those things itself, you can enhance or rather improve her chances, chances. to conceive, mm. you know? And um, the other test, it's quite important, is the anti-Mullerian hormone. That is the best test to ascertain the patient's, uh, her ovarian reserve. Mm -hmm. Okay, that also will guide us as to how much of injections do they, okay, need? Do they need to stimulate their eggs. So when all these tests are done, mm. see, for, for women and all that, then they will ask you questions like, if my chances are low, what is my next step? And obviously IVF is, I wouldn't say, the first thing that comes up to their head. So it's maybe a, it, it may be is a, a, a suggestion that was given to them. Mm. So some people would know IVF is a very common thing now, currently, compared to 10 years back maybe. So maybe those who do not know what IVF is about. Roughly, can you tell us what is IVF? IVF used to be known as test tube babies. Mm. Okay. Um, it's a treatment of choice for certain couples where they have been trying for many years or, or they have a certain problem like blocked tubes or the husband has very poor sperm quality. Okay. It's where, on the first, there, there are a number of protocols available. The ones which we commonly use is, is the one where we start the injections, the hormonal injections, on the second day of the menstrual cycle. Okay. And the injections go on for about 10 days. During these 10 days, two or three times, the patient has come into the hospital to get herself examined, okay, where we do the transvaginal ultrasound scan to assess the ovarian response, mm. the, fo egg, the number of what we call as the follicles, okay? so the eggs. So once the eggs have reached a nice size, which is more than 17 mm and above, mm -hmm. more the merrier. We prefer at least about 5, 10, sometimes we go up to 15 okay, eggs. <coughs> then once it reaches a good size, then uh, the 13th day, we, we tend to we'll do a trans transvaginal uh, procedure mm -hmm. where we retrieve her, her eggs. Okay, you know, oocyte retrievals. And that will be done under anesthesia. Mm -hmm. Three to five days later, okay, once this, this, uh, this embryo has been fertilized, three to five days later, we'll transfer it back into her womb. And how, how many embryos? I mean, how many of them? A lot? Well, <clears throat> we prefer to transfer one or maximum two. Oh. Because when you transfer one embryo in, the woman gets pregnant, okay? And she'll be like a healthy, normal pregnant woman, okay? Compared to twins or triplets. Mm. A lot of people feel that Buy one, get two free. Okay, <laughs> triplets. But everybody sees the patient, the, the patient after the delivery. Once the babies are out, everything's mm. happy and nice. Mm. But you don't know what happened 
before that. Yep. Okay, where you've got preterm deliveries, medical illnesses in pregnancy, yep. she's unable to move around normally, her pregnancy risk is high. Mm. So, patients who come in to a fertility, fertility clinic are generally healthy. Mm -hmm. So, we would not want to make them unhealthy. Correct. Okay, so in my practice, I prefer to put in one, that's my first choice, mm -hmm. or two. That's it. No more three. <laughs> and um, when you put in the embryos prior to that, uh, can mm. it be screened? Um, yes. We do have certain methods available to screen these embryos. Firstly, by microscopic uh, assessment of the embryos. We have a certain um, criteria to grade the embryos, whether the grade one, grade one, two, three to five. Mm -hmm. okay? you need grade one, two and three are good for transfer. Four and five generally, they're discarded. Okay, because the probability for a pregnancy is very low. low. Okay. <clears throat> Secondly, the other method is known as pre-implantation genetic testing. Mm -hmm. During this process, before we transfer it into the womb, we will do a procedure called a biopsy, where we will retrieve uh, a few cells, two or three cells, mm -hmm. okay, from the embryos. And then we will assess them under certain um, testing, okay, and we can determine exactly how the chromosomes are. Oh. Okay, we can rule out Down syndrome, Patau syndrome, trisomy. This is before. Oh, before transfer, okay. So you know all the twenty-three pairs of chromosomes, which wow. twenty-two pairs, and the X and Y chromosome, which is the, the chromosome that determines gender. gender. Okay, so <clears throat> when we do this test, we can determine the. We can, uh, it can help us to identify the best embryo to transfer. So, these procedures will reduce your risk of mixed miscarriages, will improve your, the probability for pregnancy, okay? and uh, also assure you that your baby is healthy. Okay. Yeah. I want to talk to you more about uh, types of the PGTs, which is the pre-implantation genetic testing that we were talking about in a bit. <coughs> we'll be right back. Don't go away. Okay. You're back with me in agenda on Agenda Awani with me, Jasmine Awabaka, and today I have Dr. Navdeep Singh from TMC Fertility Centre, Kota Namasara. Exciting and also interesting and informative um, information about uh, IVF, about chances of you getting pregnant, uh, and what other ways, and also things that you can do and treatments you can get um, from uh, one of the renowned fertility centres in Malaysia, TMC Fertility Centre. So, we're going to continue our conversation about the pre-implantation genetic testing. Just now, did, we did mention about um, how the embryos are checked prior to uh, transferring into the womb. And we also want to know the types of PGT. That's a short form of the pre-implantation genetic testing so that you are not lost in this conversation. So, Doctor. There are four main types. The commonest is the PGT-A for oh. aneuploidy. It's a test where we determine the numbers of chromosomes to ensure that the, the, the embryo has 23 pairs of chromosomes. Mm. Okay? Any addition, known as trisomy, or any deletion, then that will, addition or deletion of the number of chromosomes will reduce your probability of pregnancy and also um, it indicates that the embryos are unhealthy. Mm. Okay? And uh, <clears throat> that's the, the commonest uh, method that, that we, we use in patients who have recurrent miscarriages mm. or recurrent uh, IVF failures. And, and those of the advanced maternal age, they're worried about having a, uh, like a Down syndrome child. Okay? All those families who, which have had an uh, abnormal child before. Right. The second type <coughs> is, the, uh, is known as PGTM for mm -hmm. monogenic diseases. It's where, where we can determine whether the, the, the embryos have any inheritable disease, diseases that the family already has. Mm -hmm. Example, thalassemia. Yeah. Okay? or cystic fibrosis. Okay. Well, we will examine both the couple, the couple, the couple husband and wife. We will um, check their blood for any uh, mutation of that particular disease 
and then we can determine exactly what mutation they have. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then we can do a biopsy and a test on those embryos to the, to rule out whether they have that disease or not. So, so much so that when we transfer an embryo in your in her womb, we are very sure that the, that that embryo does not carry that disease that disease which runs in the in their family. Mm -hmm. Okay, so she will deliver a healthy baby. Healthy baby. The, third, the, third, the third method is known as the PGT HLA, human leukocyte antigen. Generally, it is used to determine whether the embryo okay, matches another sibling of, of the, uh, the, um, the, the family, okay, any family member, usually the sibling. Mm. So it can, be, it can be used as a savior sibling. Example, if uh, the, 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 uh, the family has a child, mm. it has uh, uh, bone marrow problems or mm. blood problems, okay, and needs a bone marrow transplant. Mm. Okay? So the family can do PGT, HLA, to determine whether that embryo ma is matches, is compatible with its, with its sibling. Okay, and then she can, the, the mother can deliver that baby, and that sibling can be, uh, I mean, the, the blood can be used to save the elder sibling. Okay, no, it's a savior sibling. Mm. Okay, and uh, final, finally is the uh, PGTSR for structural rearrangement. Um, this is also generally done to, uh, to, uh, to ascertain whether the uh, embryos are healthy or not yep. in certain, in, in certain uh, couples, but it's not very commonly used compared to the are the two, which is the monogenic and uh, which is the, uh, the aneuploidy testing. So we talked about um, family inheritance or inheritance. Well, say for example, I do not have any fam family history of uh, chromosome conditions. Is PGT still you know, um, appropriate for me? Yes, must have an indication. Hmm. You may have uh, patients who had recurrent miscarriages, recurrent IVF failures or uh, or above age of 40, advanced age group, okay? or maybe history of Down syndrome child before. Yes, it's, it's definitely uh, indicated. And of course, chances of success <laughs> in PGTs. Okay. My last cases, okay, out of 10, eight of them are currently pregnant. Okay? So you can see that the, it's that the embryo selection mm. okay, is enhanced because mm. we, can, we can select the best embryo to be transferred. Mm. Okay, so the success rate is very good. I would say definitely above, uh, above 70%. When mm. we talk about 70% and 8 out of 10 mm. is pregnant, risk. Mm. Those are questions that are, co are common, I'm sure, because a lot of people are aware of, you know, they have Google, Dr. Yes. Google, you know, <laughs> Dr. Friends, for example. So yes. they would want to know about risks. So can we talk about risks? The biggest risk with doing a pre implantation genetic testing is having all abnormal embryos. Hence, there's nothing to transfer. And that can happen in a certain number of patients. Example, you know, we had a patient with uh, six good-looking embryos when we did the genetic testing for them. Mm. All had abnormalities. So in those, those kind of scenarios, it's very uh, heartbreaking yeah. for us as a medical side and also for the patients. Mm. There is nothing to transfer. Mm. But uh, in, certain, in certain scenarios, either the husband or the wife had some genetic problem, mm. okay, where we have to do a karyotyping, that means a genetic testing for either the husband or wife. Mm. You know, um, we, we do it for both to, look f to, s to check whether they have any abnormalities or not, which predisposed to that condition. Mm. And usually, if they were to go through such ordeals, for example, I'm sure you've gone through a few um, of your, from your patients yourself. Mm. So, I mean, what do we actually, you know, do, do they normally do it again, a whole round again? Yes. They do? Yes. <coughs> Quite a number of patients repeat the whole IVF cycle. And uh, we take the injections for about 10 days, retrieve their eggs, and then uh, we do the biopsy and wait for the results. Mm. Some of them, eventually get, become successful in getting their healthy, healthy embryo and eventually get pregnant. But some of them still remain the same. 
You know, okay. it's heart wrenching. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Uh, I'm guessing it will be heart wrenching to those couples as well. Yes. Um, let's a little bit touch on openness of people about treatments like this now mm. currently because we are in the area of Malaysia Baru, mm. so a lot of people are slightly more open to talk about things like this. Mm. So, what do you think about acceptance uh, of the people out there about IVF and talking about fertility itself? I think our our the citizens of Malaysia, okay. A lot of us are educated nowadays. Okay, everyone goes through education. Everyone's aware of what what we have out there nowadays, and uh, and social media, our uh, helps a lot too. Mm -hmm. Okay, a lot of a lot of doctors are against Google, but uh, I feel Google is good because it educates to some extent. Mm -hmm. Okay, our general public as to what kind of treatments are available. Mm. You know, so it's good. It's good that that everybody is aware now. So at least they will come in for treatment at the earlier stage okay. rather than you know, being unaware and you know, coming age of 45 and then trying to seek for medical, medical advice. So it's good that we have a edu quite an educated uh, <laughs> population nowadays. Yeah, I would, uh, I would assume so because uh, nowadays when we talk about fertility and we read, every, everybody is uh, open to sharing their experience, yes. etc. So talking about um, fertility centres uh, that uh, TMC has, uh, not only in Kota Damansara, if I'm not mistaken, no. do you have any more um, fertility centres around Malaysia? Yes, we have, we have a branch in Penang, mm -hmm. Ipoh, uh, Kepong, Puchong okay, and Johor Bahru. Okay, it covers so, the big cities. Yes, covers mainly big cities. Mm. Yes. And uh, the um, treatment offers are the same? <clears throat> the treatment offers can vary between centre to centre. Mm -hmm. um, some of the centres uh, have uh, certain like, genetic testing, mm -hmm. some don't. Um, but we do offer um, a wide, wide, wide range of, uh, of treatments in those centres too. And let me tell you a little bit uh, of a personal... I go to TMC Fertility Center for my kids and myself as well a couple of years back. So um, I know they have a very good uh, offering, I would say. Mm -hmm. So for you out there, don't worry, come in. Uh, they'll give you the best information that you need, not necessarily act on it. However, the information that you get from TMC Fertility Center is the best way to go because only Dr. Google would not help. Yes. Uh, you know, we have. Uh, experts to talk about things like this <laughs> and clearly today I've learned a lot and I'm sure you did as well. Thank you very much Dr. Navdeep for being with us on welcome. Agenda Awani. We'll call him again hopefully to extend this conversation because only talking about it once would not let people know more about fertility, about being fertile for example. So thank you very much for joining us Dr. Navdeep. Thank you very much. I'll see you again soon and this is Agenda Awani. I'm Jasmine Obaka. Thank you.